Hello, and welcome to Top Select 10. Looking for the best movies to watch on Netflix in 2024? We've got you covered with the top 10 must-watch Netflix movies you simply can't miss. From gripping dramas and thrilling action films to heartwarming comedies and mind-bending sci-fi, these movies will keep you entertained all year long. We've curated the ultimate list of the best Netflix movies that are making waves on Netflix right now. Whether you're in the mood for intense storytelling, stunning visuals, or unforgettable performances, this video highlights the movies that are taking Netflix by storm in 2024. Hit that like button, subscribe for more top-tier recommendations, and let us know in the comments which Netflix movie you're excited to watch next. Grab your snacks and get ready for an epic movie night with these must-see films. Number 10. Angel Has Fallen Secret Service agent Mike Banning is protecting the new president, former speaker, and Vice President Trumbull. While on a fishing trip, they are attacked by drones Mike saves the president who is in a coma. Mike is knocked out when he wakes up. An FBI agent tells him he's under suspicion of being tied to the attack on the president which he denies. When Mike is being transported, the transport is attacked and Mike is taken. Mike then escapes. He goes on the run. He goes to his estranged father, a war vet who left him because he couldn't adjust to civilian life. Later some men attack them but Mike's father was ready and took care of them. Mike learns they work for a private military contractor headed by his friend Wade Jennings. Mike deduces someone in the government wanted Trumbull out of the way so that they could declare war to make profit. When Mike learns Trumbull is recovering, he thinks they will make another attempt so Mike goes to protect Trumbull. Number 9. Safe House In Cape Town, South Africa, rookie CIA agent Matt Weston is a safe housekeeper and is in love with his French girlfriend Anna Moreau who does not know about his double life. When the most wanted rogue and former CIA agent Tobin Frost surrenders to the American consulate to escape from an attack of dangerous soldiers of fortune, he is brought to the safe house to be interrogated by specialist Daniel Kiefer and his team. However, there is a breach in the safe house and mercenaries break in the place expecting to capture Tobin Frost. Matt escapes with Tobin and he contacts the CIA senior management Harlan Whitford, David Barlow and Catherine Linklater that give instruction to Matt to reach another safe house. But Tobin warns Matt that there is an informer in the CIA, and he shall not trust in anyone. Number 8. The Hitman's Bodyguard With his reputation in tatters after the painfully unsuccessful delivery of a distinguished Japanese client, the former AAA protection agent, Michael Bryce, is now reduced to a mere second-class bodyguard for hire, two years after the disgraceful incident. Under those circumstances, Bryce would do anything to prove his worth, and before long, he accepts an offer from Interpol to escort the international assassin, Darius Kincaid, from Manchester to The Hague. The task seems simple. Bryce needs to transport him from point A to point B. Nevertheless, the trip to the Netherlands is long and hazardous and Kincaid as the only one with the guts and enough hard evidence to testify against a tyrannical Belarusian dictator is an obvious target. Undoubtedly, it's a tough job, as the mismatched duo will have to put aside their grudges and race against the clock in a non-stop concerto for bullets. Can the hitman's bodyguard carry through the most important mission in his career? Number 7. Den of Thieves In Los Angeles, a team of robbers led by Ray Merriman make a violent armed attack and hijack an armored truck. Police officers arrive on the scene and engage in a shootout with the robbers. Eventually, Merriman and his crew escape with the empty armored truck. In the morning, Detective Nick O'Brien investigates the crime scene, having been monitoring Merriman and his crew for a while. Suspecting a local bartender named Donnie for involvement, Nick finds him at the bar and kidnaps him for interrogation. Donnie reveals Merriman is planning to rob the Federal Reserve on Friday of that week by covertly removing about $30 million in old bills which are scheduled to be shredded after their serial numbers are deleted from computer records. Number 6. Shadow Set during China's Three Kingdoms era, AD 220-280, the story of a great king and his people who will be expelled from their homeland and will aspire to claim it. The king, violent and ambitious, of mysterious methods and motives. His general, a visionary who yearns to win the final battle but needs to prepare his plans in secret. The women of the palace, who struggle to find redemption in a world where they have no place. And a commoner called Lord of All the World, will be the characters around who turn the inexorable forces of this story. Beautiful. The photography, the craft of tension, the acting, at the level of fight scenes, real spectacular, admirable made. And the impression of ink painting is one of its high gifts. Another virtues, the resurrection of memories about Kurosawa universe, few drops of Shakespeare tragedies, and the image of shadow. A beautiful film, a decent, in large measure, tale and the feel to discover the cold water of a familiar lake. Number 5. 
The Trial of the Chicago 7 In Chicago 1968, the Democratic Party convention was met with protests from activists like the Moderate Students for a Democratic Society led by Tom Hayden and the Militant Yippies led by Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin, which led to violent confrontations with the local authorities. As a result, seven of the accused ringleaders are arraigned on charges like conspiracy by the hostile Nixon administration, including Bobby Seale of the Black Panthers who was not involved in the incident. What follows is an unfair trial presided by the belligerent Judge Hoffman and prosecuted by a reluctant but duty-bound Richard Schultz. As their pro bono lawyers face such odds, Hayden and his fellows are frustrated by the Yippies' outrageous antics undermining their defense in defiance of the system even while Seal is denied a chance to defend himself his way. Along the way, the Chicago 7 clash in their political philosophies even as they learn they need each other in this fight. Number 4. Prisoners In a town in northeastern Pennsylvania, Keller and Grace Dover, Franklin and Nancy Birch, and their respective offspring, each couple with a teenager and adolescent apiece, are best friends. While the two families are celebrating Thanksgiving together, the two adolescent girls, Anna Dover and Joy Birch, go missing. Based on events earlier in the day, the two families believe that the girls were abducted by whoever lives in the camper van parked in their neighborhood. Their beliefs are strengthened after they meet the resident of the camper, Alex Jones, a mentally childlike young man who is supported in every respect by his overprotective aunt, Holly Jones, and based on other subsequent evidence about Alex that emerges. However, Detective Loki, the lead police investigator, is pretty certain that Alex did not abduct the girls, he instead initially following leads of known sex offenders and pedophiles in the area. In addition, Loki has no evidence to hold Alex in custody, placing him at odds especially with Keller, who is certain that Alex is the one who abducted the girls. While Loki continues his investigation with Keller accusing him of not doing his job by following what he considers are pointless leads, Keller decides he has to take matters into his own hands. He has to decide how much he will involve Grace, Franklin and Nancy in getting Alex to divulge where the girls are by any means possible. His decisions as in who he will involve in getting Alex to talk may depend on how like-minded he believes the other three are, they who may be as devastated as he is, but who may neither be certain that Alex is the perpetrator or go to the same extremes as he to get the information from Alex. Number 3. Avengers – Endgame After half of all life is snapped away by Thanos, the Avengers are left scattered and divided. Now with a way to reverse the damage, the Avengers and their allies must assemble once more and learn to put differences aside in order to work together and set things right. Along the way, the Avengers realize that sacrifices must be made as they prepare for the ultimate final showdown with Thanos, which will result in the heroes fighting the biggest battle they have ever faced. Number 2. Gladiator In Gladiator, victorious General Maximus Decimus Meridius has been named Keeper of Rome and its Empire by dying Emperor Marcus Aurelius, so that rule might pass from the Caesars back to the people and Senate. Marcus' neglected and power-hungry son, Commodus, has other ideas, however. Escaping an ordered execution, Maximus hurries back to his home in Spain, too late to save his wife and son from the same order. Taken into slavery and trained as a gladiator by Proximo, Maximus lives only that he might someday take his revenge and fulfill the dying wish of his emperor. The time soon comes when Proximo's troop is called to Rome to participate in a marathon of gladiator games held at the behest of the new emperor, Commodus. Once in Rome, Maximus wastes no time in making his presence known and is soon involved in a plot to overthrow the emperor with his former love Lucilla, Commodus' sister, after whom he lusts, and also the widowed mother of Lucius, heir to the empire after his uncle and democratic-minded senator, Gracchus. Number 1. The Prestige In 19th century London, illusionist Alfred Borden is on trial for the murder of fellow illusionist, Robert Angier. Borden's indictment is largely possible because of the eyewitness account of John Cutter, who saw Borden backstage in the area where Angier was killed. At the end of one of his shows, Angier fell through a trapdoor in the stage floor into a clear water-filled tank below, that tank which was a prop for one of Angier's tricks performed earlier in the show. Angier ended up drowning, as the tank was locked after he fell into it. Borden, Angier, and Cutter have a shared largely turbulent history, which also provides motive. Early in their magic careers, both Borden and Angier worked under Milton the Magician, while Angier's wife Julia worked as his on-stage assistant and Cutter as his engineer staging the tricks and providing the apparatus required, work that he still does for others. Based on a specific incident during this stage of their relationship, led to both Borden and Angier striking out, creating their own shows, and them having a feud, which was not only in the professional realm, but a personal one, where each man wanted to ruin the other. 
While Borden is arguably more accomplished in the technical aspects of the illusions, Angier is the more accomplished showman. In the professional realm, they try to outdo each other, especially in the illusions considered either the most dangerous and or mysterious, those two being catching the bullet trick, and more so, the transported man trick. In the process of their feud, they seemingly were not averse to any means, even with collateral damage of others. The question is if those means extend to murder, especially of the other. If you like this video please subscribe to my channel, like and share the video. Thank you.